Hi, AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here for video number two covering topic 4.7, L'Hopital's Rule. And I think what I've got going on here is a as a, a quartet of examples that might just be a little bit more challenging with return with respect to the derivatives. So hopefully you've watched the introductory video that covered example one, because a lot of the things that I say in this video will probably make a little bit more sense. So here's what we have in our example two. As I said, I've got four different limits here that we're going to be investigating, and each one um, is a little bit different in terms of what x is approaching. So for the first one, the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x minus 1 over x squared minus x. It is so imperative that you know going into the AP calculus exam that you have to state why L'Hopital's rule can be used. And the best way to do that is just to simply buckle down and take the limit of the numerator separately from the limit of the denominator. Now, the thing that you might want to think about here is that that's a great practice even if L'Hopital's rule doesn't apply because if this results in some kind of non-indeterminate form like a something besides 0 over 0 or an infinity over an infinity then boom you can just put those two numbers together in a fraction and there's your answer and you'd get full credit. But in this particular case, because the limit of the top, cosine of 0, which is 1, minus 1 is 0, and the bottom, of course, is 0, we have to have those separate so that we can say that L'Hopital's rule applies. And you don't even have to say that L'Hopital's rule applies, but you can. It's kind of a nice argument. So by L'Hopital's rule, you can also abbreviate L'Hopital. You can spell it either of its two possible ways with the accent in no s or the way that I've spelled it. And then boom, you go about taking the derivative of the numerator. In this case, we get negative sine of x. And we take the derivative of the denominator, 2x minus 1, only to discover we still have another indeterminate form. We have 0 over 0 um, one more time. No, we don't have an indeterminate form. I was trying to see if you guys were uh, kind of going to fall for that. Just because you get 0 in the top doesn't mean that you're going to get another indeterminate form. We get a negative 1 in the bottom, and that's OK. That's a number. That's equal to 0. It's acceptable. 0 is a number. So you have to be very careful about that particular situation. I would really suggest at this point that you pause the video and try to work through parts B, C, and D on your own. And then once you have finished those, resume the video and check your answers. Let's see how you did. Now what I'm going to do for B, C, and D is I'm not going to model very good AP style behavior. In the For the sake of time, I'm not going to write out the conditions that L'Hopital's rule needs the two separate limits. Now I'm going to return to that for examples three and four, which are actually more AP style questions, but understand that it's so important that those should be written out every time that you do L'Hopital's rule. I'm more concerned about our derivative work here. So if we tried to plug one in for the top and the bottom, you would get zero divided by zero. I'll let you confer that on your own. And when we take the derivative of the top, we would get 1 over x minus 1. And when we take the derivative on the bottom, we get e to the x minus just plain old e. Now you want to make sure you understand the derivative of e times x does not require the product rule because e is a constant. Now if we plug 1 in for x, you notice that we are going to get a 0 on top and a 0 on bottom. Now I'm not kidding you this time we do indeed get those. So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule again. And you can use L'Hopital's rule as many times as you need. So the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Derivative of 1, of course, is 0. And then in the dom denominator, the derivative of e to the x is, of course, e to the x. Now I believe I can let x be 1. And upon doing so, I get negative 1 on top, e to the first on bottom, 
and that is the answer to our limit. And you can even check this out using a graphing calculator to verify. Let's see how you did with part C. Now, <laughs> with part C, it's likely that maybe you noticed you didn't need L'Hopital's rule, which I think is absolutely fantastic if that was the case. But if you tried to plug infinity in, you're going to get a, a negative infinity on top over an infinity on bottom. So L'Hopital's rule would give us something like this the first time around. And by indication of my statement, it probably means that we need to do L'Hopital's rule yet again. So why not? Let's do it. It's a pretty easy derivative to take, or a pair of derivatives to take. So the derivative of the top is negative 10. The derivative of the bottom is 6. That's a constant. We can reduce it, and we get negative 5 thirds. But wait, could we have found this answer much faster? Remember, if you're taking the derivative of x approaching infinity of a polynomial over a polynomial, all that needs to be done is to compare the highest power of each part of the polynomial. And if they agree, like they do in this case, both are two, then all we need to do is to divide the coefficients. So these green highlighted numbers would just simply be divided. And lo and behold, that would give you the negative 5 thirds. So you could avoid L'Hopital's rule altogether on a problem like C, because it's a problem where x is approaching infinity. But don't think that all limits where x approaches infinity will adhere to that shortcut. Because if you have a fraction that consists of any part that does not contain strictly polynomial, strictly algebraic pieces, x to powers with maybe coefficients and whatnot, then you have to do something else. And that's exactly what we have going on in part D. I will trust that you can see that we would get an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule and take a couple of derivatives here. Derivative of the top is 8x minus 5. The derivative of the bottom is 5e to the 5x plus 1 over x. Now, if you try to plug infinity in for x, I think we're going to see the top is still infinity or approaching infinity, and the bottom is also going to be approaching infinity rather quickly. Now, the 1 over infinity drops out because that's a 0, but we still have an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So let's do L'Hopital's rule again. The derivative of the top is 8. You have pretty much guaranteed that you will not use L'Hopital's rule anymore because we have something on top that's not a zero or an infinity. The denominator's derivative is going to be 25e to the 5x, and the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Now if we let x become infinity, again, this term basically zeroes out on us. We get something really big and infinite in the bottom, which means 8 over infinity is essentially a very small number and that number we'll call 0. Again, I really suggest that if you have any doubts about these, you can investigate them graphically to verify that these answers are the way that they are. L'Hopital's rule is not a real difficult concept. As long as you can take derivatives, you're going to be very good at it. But on the AP exam, it's a bit of a trap sometimes because students so often don't write this condition that's required. So again, don't model the behavior that I displayed in parts B, C, and D. I only did that for the purpose of the video to speed things up. Right. Check out video three and four because you're going to see a lot more AP style type of question where you use L'Hopital's rule. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.